Si solum fiat sufficit. Words of the aged Apostle John when asked why he always said the same thing. Magister, quare semper hoc loquiris? Master, why do you always say this? And he would always say, when asked to give a word, little children love one another. And he answered simply, that was all the master said, and if that alone were done, it would be sufficient. To live in love. To love. In love to be. And to be naught but love. But to love well. With loving's art and skill. Eternally to be part of the loved in heaven in hell, and there for e'er upon a gaze to gaze, unveiled in full at last, bid God or fiend, all seen beyond the screen of yonder days, seen in the visage behind which here twas screen. This is the all, this is the end of all that matters in a day. There is no more, no greater matter here. This measure small is all that shall weigh all. All evermore. And simple, oddly simple words I hear. As near as this, my little brother, here. There were thought to be 631 precepts derived from the Torah. Hence the many scribes and doctors of the law around who were experts at applying the official interpretation. That is the backdrop to this question, which is the biggest? This week, I have been thinking about essentially the difference between our faith and that of other major religions. You probably know why. You may have been doing the same thing yourself. We have a grace in our time, insofar as the Holy Spirit moved the conclave to elect someone who would underline the essence in the spirit of St. Francis, who returned to the uncomplicated and uncluttered gospel, which then, if it's not practiced, takes away all illusion, the kind of illusion that we could have, in this case, of Pharisees putting the Lord to the test. They couldn't see the tree or the wood for the trees. The law the law. We have heard a lot recently about the Sharia law. Based on what? If one looks in depth, and I mean in objective, complete depth, at the origins of Islam, 
one is puzzled. Either Gabriel, the archangel, did appear to Muhammad, or he didn't. If he did, it's very strange that he should have come out with the things that he is purported to have come out with, in complete contradiction with received truth. If he didn't, there's a big question mark over that origin. And indeed, the question mark becomes thicker and thicker as one sees the development of it, even in the early stage. There is interior contradiction, considerable and complete internal contradiction in the sacred texts coming from the origin. And they have, by their own admission, their own casuistry, which enables them to negotiate which to apply. It's this one. When two apparent contradictions occur, one applies the most recent. However, when one is speaking with other believers of different faiths, one is allowed to select that which actually will make the message pass. Because the supreme end of conquering the soul for Islam is greater than that of logic and truth. Now, the law coming from that religion contains such things as you know what. And by now, anyone who is that way inclined can do his own homework even on YouTube as regards the way that the law of God is applied in Islamic culture. Fairly recently, a good woman was gang raped and quite justly she appealed to the public authorities for justice. What was the consequence? She was found guilty, she was found guilty of the abomination of adultery. And the consequence followed. She was to be, and she was, stoned to death. And as she died, she cried out for help. God alone was able to give it after the last stone. And those who had accused her were scot-free. And God, I mean Allah, was being honoured. It was the punishment of honour. And on we could go. There is actually on YouTube the punishment being shown of a child who stole something and is shown to have his arm outstretched and crushed to death under a heavy Land Rover. This is the abomination that is right now threatening a whole Western culture in the name of God. And we can't see what's going on. It's easy to take Christians as a target. Why? Because if they're following their law, the law of charity, they will always be merciful. They will turn the other cheek. This week, I was reflecting on something which hit me very strongly when it came through the post. You can just about see it. It's a drawing by a nun, I believe, of the host and the chalice. It is an invitation to be present, at least at a distance, next Saturday, to yet another profession in perhaps the most severe monastery in the world. It's the victims of the Sacred Heart in Marseille. They haven't changed a thing, a thing, from when they were founded. And because they were 
unchanged and unchanged thing they used to call us regularly to make their annual retreat. They had the old right and everything. And it was very, very serious. But their life is made of precisely creating a lifelong sentence of victimhood. All these hidden virgins are never seen. Even when I was preaching to them, they were completely covered, their face. And they invent ways and means of day and night offering their whole soul and body, and even the soul on the deepest level of the will, as a complete holocaust to hold up the world. This is the extreme of our law of charity, self-giving and all for the vertical. It works when it's coherent. But then, the other bit too, which the Lord put side by side from the beginning, cannot be divorced from it. Charity lived, ingested, breathed, plugged into, in an atmosphere of the vertical, will normally be felt. Go into a monastery and ask yourself, what am I feeling? If it's an authentic community, you will feel it. Peace and welcoming. The beam of Christ is in the eyes. It is one movement, and so it should be. Indeed, I was quite moved this week by an unexpected expression of that coming from Italy. As I mentioned before, the community is going to take over a monastery in France and closing down, but not all of them want to go. And already there are one or two signals coming from there that those who I used to form want to come to me, but there's no way. But it's nice that that should be the case, that the bonding was also there on the human level, and one feels something for souls. If it weren't the case, it would be completely incoherent, as in a family. Look, when you go from here, at the quality of your relationships. Are you ashamed of anything as you go out of church in that linear movement of charity breathed and plugged into? Are there harsh words? Because one can't enjoy the love of God and then enjoy hurting someone else. A soul who doesn't feel the pain of someone else has not even started on the spiritual life. It's one whole. I just want to finish on one other point. It's the fact that the vertical also has its laws. Always in view of charity, but if in the cloisters of the world the absolute has been felt for what it is and deserving the best of humankind, then we mustn't think that we can get there by shortcut methods. If our vocation is marriage, then we must find the perfection of marriage. Love expressed, not in a complicated way, by, but creating joy. If it's the other, it must have its own rules, but it must not be based on bringing the family into it. It's a different way. Hence the absolute of silence. But, in the last resort, remember, it's not two different vocations. It's one lived under two modes. It's love. And John, when he was an old man, the Apostle John, would be called upon by the church to give a word. He would always say one thing, little children, loved one another. And week after week he would get up as asked to and say the same thing. And one day they asked him, Reverend Father John, why do you always say the same thing? The Lord 
gave only one commandment, and if it were done, it would be enough. Returning home to La Trappe after seven years at Célignac, Chartreuse, in the silence of the Cartesian cell. Seven years have passed and more since I beheld these hallowed walls and walked this cloister maze. Seven years, I say, of time, of time withheld by timelessness, where time stood still. I gaze where I had gazed before, a little man, at what still stands and speaks without a word at those that it enshrouds. Here it began, its pull pulled air so hard that all this world could not pull back, but only tear into. La trappe! Thy bait had caught me. Is it real? This odour smelt again. Is this thing true? That thou this day henceforth dost from me steal what was here to my cord umbilical. My link with man is sworn. I have said